Ye of the Needle is a spy thriller novel written by Welsh author Ken Follett. 1. It was originally published in 1978 by the Penguin Group under the title Storm Island. This novel was Follett's first successful, best-selling effort as a novelist, and it earned him the 1979 Edgar Award for Best Novel from the Mystery Writers of America. 2. The revised title is an allusion to the Eye of a Needle aphorism. The book was made into a motion picture of the same title in 1981, starring Donald Sutherland, with a screenplay adapted by Stanley Mann and directed by Richard Marquand. Kenneth Martin Follett, CBE, FRSL 1 2, born 5 June 1949, is a Welsh author of thrillers and historical novels who has sold more than 160 million copies of his works. Many of his books have achieved high ranking on bestseller lists. For example, in the US, many reached the number one position on the New York Times bestseller list, including Triple 1979, The Key to Rebecca 1980, Lie Down with Lions 1985, A Dangerous Fortune 1993, World Without End 2007, Fall of Giants 2010, Winter of the World 2012, and Edge of Eternity 2014. 4. Plot Summary. Edit. In 1940, Henry Faber, a German spy nicknamed Die Nadel, the Needle, due to his trademark weapon being a stiletto, is working at a London railway depot, collecting information on Allied troop movements. Faber is halfway through radioing this information to Berlin when his widowed landlady stumbles into his room hoping for intimacy. Faber fears that Mrs. Garden will eventually realize that he was using a transmitter and that he is a spy, so he kills her with his stiletto, then resumes his transmission. David, a trainee RAF pilot, and his bride Lucy are on their honeymoon when they're involved in a car crash. David loses the use of both his legs. Unable to fly during the Battle of Britain, David grows embittered and he and Lucy retire to the isolated, fictitious, Storm Island off the east coast of Scotland. Lucy later gives birth to their son Jonathan, Joe, conceived just before the wedding, but their subsequent relationship remains celibate. Four years later, MI5 has executed or recruited all German spies in Britain except Faber. A history professor formerly acquainted with Faber, Godleman, and a widowed ex-policeman, Bloggs, are employed by MI5 to catch him. They start with the interrupted broadcast and his codename Die Nadel. They connect the landlady's murder to Faber by him having used his needle during the transmission. They then interview Faber's fellow tenants from 1940. One identifies Faber from a photo of him as a young army officer. Faber is ordered by Berlin to investigate the first United States Army Group Fusag, military base. He takes photos and discovers it is a dummy and has merely been constructed to look real from the air. Several soldiers try to arrest him but he kills them with his stiletto. Realizing that FUSAG being fake implies that the D-Day landings will be in Normandy rather than around Calais, Faber heads for Aberdeen, Scotland, where a U-boat will take him and his intelligence back to Germany. Godleman and Bloggs realize what Faber is trying to achieve and chase him across northern England and Scotland. Faber escapes many times but his repeated killings intended to prevent people from recognizing his appearance allow MI5 to track him to Aberdeen. Both Hitler and Churchill are informed that Faber has the critical information. German Field Marshals Rommel and von Munstead, both already convinced that Normandy is indeed the target, lobby Hitler for several reserve panzer divisions, but Hitler delays making a decision until he receives Faber's intelligence. In Aberdeen, Faber steals a small trawler and sets out to meet the U-boat. Caught by a fierce storm, he is shipwrecked on Storm Island, collapsing near the isolated house where David, Lucy and Joe live. Lucy nurses him back to health. Stuck in a loveless marriage to the crippled David, she begins a physical relationship with Faber. David soon discovers both Lucy's infidelity and Faber's FUSAG photos. David confronts Faber, but after a struggle Faber kills David by rolling him off a cliff, and tells Lucy it was another accident. However, she discovers her husband's body and realizes the truth. Faber realizes he may be caught before leaving the island and so tries to radio the information about FUSAG directly to Germany. Lucy stops him by short-circuiting the electricity in the cottage, injuring herself in the process. By the cold logic which has guided his actions throughout his career, Faber should kill Lucy, but he finds himself unable to do so, being deeply in love with her to the detriment of his mission and of simple self-preservation. Unable to send a radio message, Faber attempts to descend the cliff and swim to the waiting U-boat. Lucy throws a rock down at him, striking him and causing him to lose his balance and fall to his death. An RAF patrol plane then appears and drives the U-boat away. 
A fictitious radio message is sent with Faber's call code, convincing the Germans that the planned invasion is still targeting Calais and causing Hitler to deny Rommel and Rundstedt the reserve panzer divisions. Bloggs comforts the widowed Lucy, with the epilogue implying that they later married. List of characters. Edit. Henry Faber, Die Nadel, also called the Needle, a German spy. David Rose Young RAF fighter pilot. Lucy Rose David Rose's wife. Billy Parkin Young soldier who identified Faber. Percival Godleman history professor, recruited to MI5. Frederick Bloggs policeman, seconded to MI5. Inspiration. Operation Fortitude was an Allied counterintelligence operation run during World War II. Its goal was to convince the German military that the planned D-Day landings were to occur at Calais and not Normandy. As a part of Fortitude the fictitious 1st United States Army Group FUSAG, was created. FUSAG used fake tanks, aircraft, buildings and radio traffic to create an illusion of an army being formed to land at Calais. The controversial American General George S. Patton was given command of this army, which also influenced the German military. As Fale notes in the foreword to the novel, if the deception had been discovered the invasion of Nazi-occupied Europe would have become more difficult. Operation Fortitude was a military deception operation by the Allied nations as part of Operation Bodyguard, an overall deception strategy during the build-up to the 1944 Normandy landings. Fortitude was divided into two subplans, North and South, and had the aim of misleading the German High Kommandostoff location of the invasion. Dot. Military deception Mildic, is an attempt by a military unit to gain an advantage during warfare by misleading adversary decision-makers into taking action or inaction that creates favorable conditions for the deceiving force. 1. 2. This is usually achieved by creating or amplifying an artificial fog of war via psychological operations, information warfare, visual deception, or other methods. 3. As a form of disinformation, it overlaps with psychological warfare. 4. Military deception is also closely connected to Operation Security OPSEC, in that OPSEC attempts to conceal from the adversary critical information about an organization's capabilities, activities, limitations, and intentions, or provide a plausible alternate explanation for the details the adversary can observe, while deception reveals false information in an effort to mislead the adversary. 5. Prolific Welsh novelist Ken Follett's psychological thriller novel Eye of the Needle 1978, seminal in the spy genre, which heavily utilizes suspense, became highly popular in the decade it was published. Its title references the difficulty of the precise task of threading a needle. It also characterizes the British MI5 struggle to capture the antagonist Henry Faber, who is aptly nicknamed The Needle. The novel uses real World War II era events, places, and names, creating a blend of fact and fiction that passes as plausible in this era of unprecedented deception and international turmoil. A foreword provides a historical background, describing Operation Fortitude, a counterintelligence measure taken by the Allied powers during World War II to misinform the Germans about the location of D-Day's attack site. The fictional FUSAG, or First United States Army Group, was created by the Allies, it used props to direct the Germans' attention to Calais and away from Normandy, the intended point of attack. The success of this deception relied on the trust of every involved member of the FUSAG. The plot rewinds to 1940. It introduces the antagonist Henry Faber, a notorious spy for Germany who uses a stiletto as his murder weapon. He is posing as a railway depot associate in London, observing the passage of troops through the city's infrastructure in order to approximate Allied military decisions. When Faber goes to his lodging to relay what he has learned, his call is interrupted by his landlady, a lonely woman looking for company. Faber decides that he has no choice but to kill her. When she is dead, he finishes his radio call. The story shifts to Royal Air Force pilot David. Newly married, he and Lucy leave for their honeymoon. Their trip is cut short by a gruesome car crash after which David requires the amputation of both of his legs. As the Battle of Britain wages on and is unable to defend his country, David turns into a malcontent. He and Lucy move to Storm Island on the Scottish coast. Back at MI5, operatives have killed or converted every known German spy, except Faber. The intelligence think tank recruits an ex-cop, blogs, and a professor of history, Godleman, to find out where he is. They listen to his broadcast from his apartment in London, and learn that his code name is German for, The Needle. They proceed to interrogate the other inhabitants of the apartment building. One of them recognizes Faber in a photo and says that he is an army officer.
The Nazi regime in Berlin orders Faber to investigate the veracity of FUSAG. He finds out that it is a sham, going to the alleged site of the base, discovering that it is fashioned to look real from planes flying overhead. He takes photos. Eventually, he realizes that Normandy, not Calais, will be the site of the Allied troops' attack on D-Day. Faber is intercepted by several officers, but kills them all using the stiletto and makes it to a secret location in Scotland where a U-boat is waiting to smuggle him to Germany. Vlogs and Godleman closely follow Faber's trail through England and Scotland. Though Faber is tripped up several times, he manages to kill each of his assailants. However, the Trail of Deaths allows MI5 to trace his path to the Scottish city of Bloggs and Godleman closely follow Faber's trail through England and Scotland. Though Faber is tripped up several times, he manages to kill each of his assailants. However, the Trail of Deaths allows MI5 to trace his path to the Scottish city of Aberdeen. Faber sets sail to the U-boat, but thrown off course by a storm, crashes on Storm Island, where David and Lucy remain. He coincidentally passes out at their house. Lucy tends to him while they try to learn where he came from. However, Lucy quickly falls for him, embittered by her tragic marriage to David. Learning of their relationship, David goes through Faber's possessions, discovering his photos of the fake FUSAG site. In an ensuing struggle, Faber rolls David off a bluff on the island's edge. He claims that it was a tragic accident, but Lucy soon finds David's body and realizes the foul play. Desperate for time, Faber radios to Germany to relay his knowledge of FUSAG in time for D-Day. Lucy destroys the cottage's power system, stopping him. Faber moves to kill her, but fails, realizing he is in love. He clambers down the island's cliff to swim the remaining distance to the U-boat. Lucy hurls a rock from atop the cliff, knocking him into the sea. Suddenly, a Royal Air Force plane fends off the U-boat. The Allies send a signal to Germany on behalf of Faber using his secret ID number. It states that the Allies intend to attack Calais. The novel's end implies that the Allies have succeeded, as Bloggs consoles Lucy. Eye of the Needle is not only a spy novel, but also a commentary on the opaqueness and contingency of history, it is impossible to know which individual triumphs and failures amounted to the key victories and losses. We remember in history today. Taking advantage of World War II's elliptical story, Follett suggests that its outcome could have come down to the most fundamental human accident, love. Aberdeen. Faber sets sail to the U-boat, but thrown off course by a storm, crashes on Storm Island, where David and Lucy remain. He coincidentally passes out at their house, Lucy tends to him while they try to learn where he came from. However, Lucy quickly falls for him, embittered by her tragic marriage to David. Learning of their relationship, David goes through Faber's possessions, discovering his photos of the fake FUSAG site. In an ensuing struggle, Faber rolls David off a bluff on the island's edge. He claims that it was a tragic accident, but Lucy soon finds David's body and realizes the foul play. Desperate for time, Faber radios to Germany to relay his knowledge of FUSAG in time for D-Day. Lucy destroys the cottage's power system, stopping him. Faber moves to kill her, but fails, realizing he is in love. He clambers down the island's cliff to swim the remaining distance to the U-boat. Lucy hurls a rock from atop the cliff, knocking him into the sea. Suddenly, a Royal Air Force plane fends off the U-boat. The Allies send a signal to Germany on behalf of Faber using his secret ID number. It states that the Allies intend to attack Calais. The novel's end implies that the Allies have succeeded, as Bloggs consoles Lucy. Eye of the Needle is not only a spy novel, but also a commentary on the opaqueness and contingency of history, it is impossible to know which individual triumphs and failures amounted to the key victories and losses we remember in history today. Taking advantage of World War II's elliptical story, Follett suggests that its outcome could have come down to the most fundamental human accident, love.